Hello all, Scooby331 here. I uh, apologize for the sounds that you're hearing and the lighting, that's the carbon monoxide. I'm uh, utilizing my sister's abandoned apartment to cut this video. Uh, I tried going everywhere else, it's raining today. Uh, had actually a guy try to debate me about the president when I tried filming at the train station because I went there for the scenery. Uh, so yeah. I uh, went through a bit of a runaround trying to get this done, but uh, this is something I was uh, meaning to do a while back. I apologize, actually, for taking this long. Uh, just addressing a few of the things that have been uh, going on the past, it's actually months at this point. Uh, see, the thing of it was, I had spoken about this uh, publicly a lot, and didn't think it was necessary to do a video. Um, I'd actually like to thank... To start off, uh, National Libertarian, uh, Purposeful Discussion, same guy, uh, uses both of those names. He uh, he explained to me that it's uh, kind of a good look if I actually cut a video, uh, shows people I'm sincere, and, uh, you know, it, uh, it makes, you know, people want, to, I'm old-fashioned, I'd rather tell you it to your face, but people would actually rather have, like, a video cut for so, hey, I, I'm amicable, so I'm going to do that for you. So what this is, is uh, apologies to people who got dragged into this mess that it was, I'm not saying it's not their business, like, you know, butt out, you know, they were helpful, they were friends of mine, and I appreciate it, so that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people dragged them in for no reason, guilt by association, that ain't cool. So I don't know how much time I got on this thing, because as you can tell by the quality of the camera, the camera's shitty, uh, wife's phone wasn't working, so this is the camera on the, the laptop I got, so there goes the carbon monoxide, and uh, hopefully I can cut this in one take, otherwise I might have to do like a part one and a part two, so I'm apologizing in advance if it just craps out out of nowhere in the next minute or so, so apologies. All right, uh, well, first I'd like to start off with uh, Miss Steam. Thank you very much for all of your help. You've been a great friend. I really apologize for you uh, getting dragged into this mess. The bombarding of threats that you got. Actual threats they gave this poor young lady. It's That ain't cool, guys. Come on. You got a beef with me, bring it to me. Don't go after other folks. But hey, I want to thank you, Miss Steamy. You were there in my corner, and I appreciate it. I understand, you know, you're going to not be streaming with me, you know, for a little bit because of uh, all this stuff. As are most of these folks, I'm listening. A lot of these folks, though, are still going to be streaming because they ain't letting anyone tell them what to do, and I really respect that, and I want to thank you for it. But Miss Steam's one of those folks she's going to be ducking out right now because she actually has a lot of stuff going on in real life, and she can't be dealing with you guys. So, nah, look. So, in other words, she ain't even around right now, so just seriously, go, go bother someone else, guys. Seriously, come on now. All right. Uh, Sir Wolfie and, uh, Pagan Butterfly Kitten, thank you guys for being there. Really appreciate all your help. I'm sorry that they went after you. Yeah, I, you know, I'm only, I'm new to this. I've only been doing this stuff since last September. I had no idea, you know, that these people were this sorts of maniacs. You know? It's just... <sighs> you guys are really, you, you're good friends. I'm glad that, you know, you stuck by me. You don't know me that well. But you've talked to me enough where you you made what you think is a good call of judgment, you know. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys for being there. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Your boy, Pat. Pat. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you standing by me through all this. I'm sorry that they said all that horrific fucking shit to you, man. That ain't cool. Seriously. Any of you guys watching this shit, you... Come on. Seriously, you're going to take it there? There, of all places. Bunch of all brow and cooth. Oh, whatever, I'm not going to ruin a good a good thing that we got going here. So, Pat, thank you. Appreciate it. You're a good friend. You're a good man. That's what a lot of people got to realize. It. This is what it means to be like a, a good, you know, a real man or a real woman. You know what I'm saying? You do the right thing. You know, he doesn't know me that well. He heard me speak my piece. It made sense to him. and. Yeah, he stuck by me, and that means a lot. Thank you, Pat. Seriously. Uh, let me see. Zeph 
and was Reptile. Thank you guys for uh, the advice that you gave me because you guys went through this yourselves. Uh, I really am not too familiar with uh, a lot of what happened with you guys. I hear all these different uh, ghost stories from all these different people because, you know, it's this internet boogeyman crap. Uh, one day I'd like to actually talk to the two of you in the future, you know, hear your version of what went down. Uh, we've talked drips and drabs here and there, but uh, I'm willing to listen. You know, that's that's my nature. But thank you guys for uh, the advice and, you know, walking me through this because I'm a rookie. I don't know what I'm doing on this. So, seriously, thank you. And, Zeph, you helped me with something that was of a personal nature, and I really appreciate that, man. I really do. You know, that meant a lot to me. You did a lot for me with that, so thank you. Uh, let's see. Nano Reaper. Nano. I'm worried about you, brother. I haven't heard from you in a few days. I hope all is well. Uh, just hit me up if you get the chance, man. I want to thank you for being there. Uh, for those of you guys uh, who aren't familiar with Nano Reaper, he is like the, verbally, the spitting image of, uh, what's his face, in We Were Soldiers. Uh, God, I can't believe I can't remember his name. Great, great actor. But yeah, that's that's how Nano is. Nano is like he's a, he's like a drill sergeant. He really is. He he's good for pep talks. He's good for advice. Uh, good for telling you, you know, get your head out of your ass. And Nano did that a lot for me over the past month or two, a few months actually. Excuse me. He he was a good advisor, a good corner man. Thank you, Nano. Thank you for being there. And I'm sorry for any flack you got, but uh. We both know anyone with common sense is scared shitless of you, so I'm sure you didn't get too much flack. Let me see. Tyro. Tyro Inkoe. I really hope I pronounced that right, bro. I never get it good. Uh, You know, Tyro, the sad thing is, you and I had no problems until these people started all this stuff. And I was never really mad mad at you, man. I was mad at the situation and the politics that got pushed on you. And I sent you that message about oof, a month or so now ago, and uh, yeah, I was in a bad place, and I wanted to just yell at you, uh, get the reaction I wanted to get out of you, and I got a surprising reaction, bro. You were a man of peace about it, and you were still my friend, even after I yelled, and that made me feel humble. That really did, and let me tell you, man. I was upset about that second stream that you did, and when you volunteered it up, that you were, that it bothered you, that, that meant a lot to me. You know, it showed me that you had class, and I it bothered me that you got the deal that you got stuck with. I didn't appreciate you muting me when you had me on the air, and the fact that that bothered you also, you know. I mean, I've... Uh, I've had other people I've become friends with on here that I've already had fallen outs with and patched things up. Um, sort of in the same vein as what happened between you and me, man. I haven't talked to you yet about this. We've only briefly messaged back and forth. But if not tonight, I was going to talk to you about it either tonight or tomorrow. So I'll talk to you when I talk to you about it, bro. So we'll, we'll talk. But in the meantime, man, uh, thank you for just having class and being a gentleman seriously that's i've noticed that's very lacking here on uh, youtube twitter and in social media whatever sphere this is um you're of a rare breed and i do appreciate that uh what had happened on the moon fest stream is something we're gonna hammer out later man but i'm willing to hammer things out as i've said to other people you're the first person i'm gonna try to hammer things out with hopefully going on how this goes between you and me, it could be used as a guideline in the context. Let other people know I'm not an ogre. They can't approach me. So, that brings me to your better half. Sorry. Uh, Lo-Fi. Uh, you and I are also going to talk either later or tomorrow. Uh, same deal as what I was saying with Tyro. Uh, you, it's a little different with. I... I got vicious with you. I sent you a message probably a little bit after Tyro, a week or two maybe. Um, you know, I, I hit people up like that because I want to go at it. And you and I went at it and didn't just block each other right off the bat. 
And I blocked you. Like, I, I do that with some people because I don't want to, I start to get angry. I don't want to actually say anything to you that I can't take back. Um, but unfortunately, like a lot of, uh, the conversation we had, you know, what it was, Lo-Fi, I felt raw. I trusted you when I went on the air and you laced into me and it upset me. It really did. Now, at the time, you weren't aware of a lot of the evidence that we've been bringing up with the evidence stream. She didn't, you weren't aware of what a lot of these folks were about. And some of them were your friends before you met me. And that's a lot of this that's been going on lately. Uh, a lot of folks have been finding out that a lot of people that they've only, they, they've known them for a while, like maybe a year or two or whatever. Uh, they found out that they had a wrong idea and a wrong bead, for lack of a better term. And uh, I understand you guys were doing some house cleaning on your own. And, you know, when I had heard about that, you know, I said, I think just like how Lo-Fi had jumped the gun and laced into me on the air, I probably laced into her when I sent her that message. Uh... I was being all bluster, if you want to know the truth, Lo-Fi. I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't ruin a person's life or chances of getting a better life. I'm not an asshole. I, I'll correct myself. I am an asshole. Um, I'm not a heartless douchebag. How about that? Uh, yeah. So, <sighs> I didn't do anything to ruin your life, Lo-Fi. I was just genuinely upset and hurt because, um, I considered you a friend and I trusted you. And, you betrayed my trust, and at least the only thing I did was write you a mean message that we can actually talk about now and try to move past. So hopefully when we do this later on, you know, stream either tomorrow or tonight, obviously you're going to see this. It's going to color whatever you say afterwards, but still, if you have anything else that you want to say, you can say it. I'll say my piece. If we don't wind up leaving as friends, whatever. You know, I'd rather we tried to piece things back together because I like Tyro, and I know obviously you and Tyro are an item, and I'd like to put myself back into the sphere where I can actually consider you a friend again, too. I'm willing to try to make that concession. I would just like you to at least try to meet me halfway and talk to me about this, you know. That's basically, you know, the best way I can put that. So, I'll talk to you when I talk to you, Lo-Fi. Let me see now. <sighs> Weebo Jones. <sighs> Weebo, you know how much I care about you. You're like a niece to me. I was, and am, upset about, you know, the past couple of things on Twitter that you put out there. Um... Yeah, I know you're upset at me, and obviously I'm very sorry that you're upset. I would never do anything to upset you, and I'd never do anything to bring anything down around your ears. <sighs> you know, I was talking to Magog about you the other night, right after the stream, and uh, Magog, really quick, I'm just, uh, if you caught any flack for this, I'm sorry that you talked to me one day, and the next day there's all hell breaking loose on your Twitter or whatever, so... Apologies if that happened to you. But Weebo, um, I just wish you would have talked to me, kiddo. I never lie to you. I always tell you the truth. You haven't seen all the evidence we've compiled yet. I'd like if you could. Just Yuma, Terra, and Six, they went to a lot of trouble. You know, last week when I went on the stream with you, uh, I would have liked to talk to you. I understand you had a lot to do. But it's one of those things we go, look, if you don't want to stream with me anymore, you don't, I'm not going to fault you for that. But I just like a chance to talk to you about all this. I'm sorry that you went through all of it, but it's something you and I need to talk about. Just to give yourself closure, if not me. You know, you owe that much to yourself. Believe me, you know, I'm twice your age. So I've been down that road that you've been, that you're going down now. And uh, I just think maybe if you get the opportunity, you want to, you know, like yell at me, uh, lace into me, talk softly, sing, whatever. I'm here.
So, don't have it hanging over your head come Christmas. Just, we'll talk, is what I'm saying. I'm here. I'm willing to talk. So, whenever you get the, kid, the chance, kiddo, all right? If not for me, it would mean the world to six. You know that. Because six is the same same as me. He looks at you with uh, uncle eyes. Like, seriously. You know how much you mean to, to him, to me, to the rest of the streaming group. We're still, we're still here as a group, even though the others are all battered from combating this maelstrom. We're all still here. So, even if you don't want to stream with us anymore, there's still a group here. And, you know, you're always part of it because you're family. You're not obligated. You never were, and I've told you that before. You know, none of us ever cared about sub counts. You know, none of us care about super chats. You know, we care about you. I care about you. And I'm sorry that people that have no lives decided that they were going to try to ruin the relationship that you had with me. And that you had with Six and with the rest of us. And we've talked about this before, you and I. Certain people were jealous of you. And certain people became obsessed with me. And they decided to kill two birds with one stone. And destroy us as a group. And I think more than anything else... That's probably one of the reasons that we haven't been working and functioning cohesively anymore as a group is, you know, you were like uh, the kid that went off to college that we all sent off, you know, and you, every Saturday was like you checking in with us. And it made the others feel good hearing how you were doing. Like when you told us about uh, how you went up against my... Uh, the guys from my neighborhood in your competition. Uh, you have no idea how proud they were. After you like, left the hangout, no one would stop talking about it. Everyone was so proud of you, you know? And I hate saying that. You're not going to get that with these chuckle fucks that are trying to, you know, like, get you to hang out with them. Believe me, they're only going after you because they like the way that you look. They're not interested in anything else, hon. I'm being sincere. But... If you get the chance, I would really love to talk to you. And again, if you don't want to talk to me, just hit up Six. Let him know how you're doing. Because the poor guy, he's worried sick about you. After all these crazy people going after you. I'm sorry about all that, Weebo. You know, but I told you guys. You gotta let me stick to it on this. and You know, let me handle it like I'm handling it. Like I'm doing this now. You know, the long overdue video. So, again, let me just go through this for you guys. Miastra Theanthropy. I, I think I need a drink after that name, bro. I hope I got it right. Uh, you and I have talked. I just want to thank you for, you know, being mature and an understanding person and realizing I'm dealing with a lot of folks who ain't playing with a full deck. And uh, if you caught any heat for streaming with me or talking to me or having me in your server, I want to apologize, man. Eh, I, I'm sorry that they're putting you through that shit. It's ridiculous. All right. Let's see. An American Celt. Terra's brother. Celt, you and I talk. I don't think you've caught any heat from this. Uh, I don't think that you're mad at me, but I know you've been worried. And I thank you for being concerned, man. And I'm sorry for making you concerned. So, yeah. Thanks for being there, man. And you got a great sister. And she's got a great brother. And I want you both to know that. And, uh, yeah, just thank you for being there, man. And being understanding. And being patient and listening. And for constantly hitting me with those god-awful mafia jokes. I appreciate all of them. So, yeah, thank you, Kelp. The One Ton Hammer. Hammer, you know, yeah, gentlemen, I really appreciate that, bro, and I thank you. You know, Hammer, it struck me as funny, like, looking back on all the crazy shit Sylvanas told me about you, I do feel like a fool, but I had seen that video a few years ago about the guy who got, like, a, a converted uh, nuclear uh, 
I guess it was an assembly facility where they actually made the missiles. The whole thing was like a couple of billion dollars when they built it. He got the thing for 20 grand. And they showed he was, he lives in this whole compound. It, it's sick. It looks like one of the maps on those shooter games. And when she told me this, that's why it clicked, because I'd seen it on the TV. And, you know, I'm sorry that I thought that, but I'm glad that you get a good laugh out of it. You know, that's one of those things where it don't feel like you're being ridiculed, because I just got told this stuff, and me and Burnside had... Why the hell would we think that she's lying about it? She painted it really plausibly, and like I told you, she told us, uh, you told us that joke, me and Six, screwing with us, and then when I mentioned it to her and she ran with it, again, sorry for something that dumb, but, you know, when all this shit first started going down, you came and, you know, told me you wanted to stream with me because you yourself had been there and you knew what I was going through and you didn't want me to be there alone, and... At that point, you probably thought I still disliked you, and until you and I talked, I didn't know that she had told me a pack of lies about you, so I still did think you were crazy. But the fact that you came to talk to me and help me through all this, man, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Hammer. That shows a lot of class on your part. And I thank you for, you know, like, uh, giving me the guidance you did at the time. Nitro, Burnside's roommate. For those of you guys who ain't familiar with Nitro, he's the man. He's a spiritual guy. He, uh, when all this stuff first started going down, he was one of the first people to get behind me on Twitter. You know, he immediately was like telling people, you gotta, you know, check this guy's stuff out, ignore everyone else, you know, make your own judgment calls. I appreciate that, Nitro. Thank you. You're good people, and I really appreciate you for being there. The bartender. Now, you know what? What happened to this kid? That really burned me and that really bothered me. And Porpoiseful was telling me because, you know, he thought that I had sent the kid, like a lot of people had even thought, that I sent this kid, like, as some messenger, like, on a suicide run. A lot of people don't realize because he had told me that he had just gotten where he was going to be hosting uh, one night a week on the Moonifest stream. They were, uh, Tyrone Wolf, I can pretty much back me up. I don't think we were talking at that point. And so this was the reason. Yeah, I think actually that's what it was. I wasn't talking to you at that point. So because he was your co-host, this is the reason I tapped the kid on the shoulder and asked him to do this. I didn't think he was going to get crucified by your other co-hosts, like, from what I had heard happen. I still haven't watched it, and I don't got the stomach to watch that shit. I want to put my friggin' fist through a wall and break my hand or something. But, kid... You know, I I got a little angry when I was talking with you a few times because, you know, I understand you're autistic. And it, it's one of those things where I care about you. I do. I always did. I like you. That's why I would tell people that you're my pit bull. Because seriously, man, when it came to financial things and economics, you're a beast. You are. Bro, you, you got that knack for that. I've always said that. You got the knack for the economics you're good with, civics, you know your shit. And that's what I tell people all the time, this kid is a beast. That's why I used to call you the pit bull, because I seen you rip people apart when you would talk to them about these things. And you know what? People gave you a raw deal because I gave you that nickname. I'm sorry, man. I really am sorry that you went through all this shit just because I don't even want to stay took you under my wing. I was just impressed with you, and I was singing your praises. Like, everyone's like, oh, you know, this is Scooby's pupil, or whatever they would say. Look, the kid impressed me. I'm sorry. I was impressed with the, the way he handled him, himself with the these topics, and I was, you know, praising him. You guys are giving this kid all, all this shit for no reason. It's There's no reason for this. this he's a good kid, you know? And he's going to sit there, and he's going to tear into him. Why? Because I sung his praises? You know, it's petty. And bartender, I appreciate everything you did. Even after you and I had words and I got harsh, you were still braver. Like I'm some sort of fucking, again, like I'm an ogre, but you were braver than most of these people because you still said, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to try to re make amends and do right by Scooby, if he, even if he is an impatient, scary asshole. And you know what? Yes, I am an impatient, scary asshole. I'm sorry I scared you. You're a decent kid. 
you don't deserve that. And I appreciate everything you did. I do consider you a friend. And, you know, when I think about you, when I think about these other people that I've, uh, who have distanced themselves a little bit just because of how I reacted to some of this shit, I'm sorry to the rest of you if, uh, if any of you that I have already named felt that way, or I'm going to name feel that way and I didn't realize it. I don't mean to intimidate you. You know, I can't help it. It's just my nature. I'm a big, scary guy. You know, I'm <laughs> street person, for lack of a better term. Not street person, like almost like I'm moving up on a bench or whatever. I'm talking like, you know, come from the neighborhood and it's just my nature. It's I'm a product of my environment. And I do apologize for that because uh, I've been told by a few people that it kind of scares the shit out of people talking to me. I don't know why. I ain't trying to be scary. But apparently that's what happens, so I'm sorry. Let me see. We are up to, you know, this poor kid, Dick Daddy Foster. What just did to Foster? He's been going through this shit now for two, three years. And I was mad at Foster. Because I seen that he had put something out on Twitter disavowing me. Right after I finally got, you know, we put together that stuff on the air. And we were able to show the thing that GCV had accidentally doxxed his own dumbass on the air. And was trying to blame Foster for being stupid. And so we look. And I look in the thing and Foster back towards me. And I'm like, the hell? I just got your ass cleared. And he's talking. And me and him talked that night. And we had words. And I was upset. I didn't threaten the kid for before any of you think that. I was just mad at the boy, and I told him so. And so then I just looked, and this actually got me even angrier. I nodded him, though. I looked on the Twitter, uh, what he put on Twitter, and I looked on the rest of the street, the thing, and I'm reading the thing. And I'm like, holy shit. It's literally like they show up and they're like, okay, you did good. You did the right thing by disavowing him. We're going to leave you alone now. And I'm reading it like, wow, you guys got some pair of fucking cojones on you. You guys got brass balls that clang. And you know what? After I saw that, I hit Foster up immediately. And I had to sit down with me, him, and Irv. You know, I wanted Irv to witness it because Irv's an honest person. Irving Twin, for those of you who ain't following. And me and Foster hammered it out. We talked. I'm not going to lie, getting him before he hopped into the hangout with Irv, me and him went out back and forth in uh, in private messages. And he can dish it out as well as he can take it. And he was always a gentleman, even though I was being a scoundrel at certain points. And I definitely want to thank you for that, Foster. And I sing your praises for that. You're a good kid, definitely. I'm just a good man. You know what I'm saying? I just, I look at all you guys as kids because... You know, bartender, Weibo, Foster, the three years. When I would stream with you guys, you got, you got that energy. You know what I'm saying? And I just liked when I had the three of you on the stream. You know, it was just, it was a good stream. And you guys all got, you got hope. You're full of all that hope. You're not destroyed like the rest of us. You know what I'm saying? You, you haven't been crushed by life yet. And... You feel young again when you get to be middle-aged and you stream with younger folks. You really do. And I appreciate it from all of you. And Foster, for what it's worth, if I was being too hard-nosed with you in a hard ass, I'm sorry. Same with the bartender. You know, you guys, I'm actually trying not to be harsh with you guys the way my father was harsh with me or any of the adults that I was dealing with. Even when I got to be a young man like you guys, when I was dealing with the older people, I'm trying to be not as harsh as them. It's still getting lost in translation. But you know that I like you kids. That's why I always wanted... That's why I consider you part of the group. Because you're good people. So for what it's worth, Foster, bartender... Sorry that uh, if I seemed harsh with you guys. I I held you up to a high standard and I kept forgetting that you're young. And young people, their hearts work differently than gruffy old men. So sorry about that, kids. Seriously. Let me see. Reject. Reject, you poor thing. Seriously, the stress that you endure from everybody. Being mama reject. I appreciate you being firm and blunt when you talk to me. Seriously, you don't uh, bandy around the bullshit. You just get right to it. 
I, I appreciate that and I thank you for it. When you when I found out that the minions had been getting all this stress and pressure and people trying to make you disavow me and coming at you like that, I said, you got to be kidding me. Not the minions. They're good people. And you guys even told me, look, we don't want to stream right now because of how hot and heavy things are getting. And I got upset about that. And I talked to, uh, to you, Reject. You know, you and I talked about that. And I was upset because, you know, I didn't want to lose you guys. Not even streaming with it. It's not like it's the exposure. That ain't the thing. It's just, I like talking to you. You're all decent people. You know, like, when I first started streaming with Chaos, the way it was uh, explained to me, that you guys were like twin streams. You know, that's at least how they thought of you guys. So I had that mentality for a while, that you guys were almost like an extended family, like, to the stream that I'm the streaming group I've been with since I started streaming. And that's how I still always think about you guys. And unfortunately, this crazy shit has uh, affected my relationship with a few of your members. Um, I'm hoping that we could try to fix things and work past it, because in case we, you guys haven't noticed lately in the past couple of weeks, uh, the people who are going after me have all started to come unglued. So... <laughs> Uh, a few of the crazier accusations have been shown that they're not exactly um, true. And uh, pretty much the rest are starting to unravel and be shown that they're also not true. So, uh, obviously, there's still going to be some fallout. I'd say this, hopefully this shit's over by Groundhog's Day. But I understand, you know, if I don't get any messages in my inbox, you know, from you guys that are hangout link in the foreseeable future, you know. I don't think I deserve it, but I understand it, and that's that's the one thing I wanted to, to stress to you, and uh, also to Lucky Pop-Tart, you know, she and I spoke, and she forgot that she spoke to me, and then hit me up again, and it kind of confused the hell out of me, and got me nervous, but then me and her talked again, and uh, she understands, you know, like I was saying, uh, like I just said to you, I was more upset than anything else that, you know, you guys didn't want to stream with me anymore. Because I just felt hurt. I, I felt it was a reflection on me. I heard what you guys were saying, but it was one of those things where I was being very, very emotional about it. Because, again, you know, uh, I just looked at you guys as friends. And I hope that I don't cause you any trouble. And obviously, I did cause you trouble just from being me. And I apologize that you guys got flack. You don't deserve that. I hadn't streamed with you guys for weeks. And you were still getting flack. So... You know, reject Poppy. I'm sorry you guys went through that. Seriously. And since we're on the minions, I just wanted to really quick talk to Skep Talk. Skep, sir. I want to apologize to you. Uh, a couple of the messages I had been sending you were very, very emotionally charged. Um, as you know, it was 10 years this summer since I lost my father. Um, he was a Navy vet, like yourself, and I was going through a lot of different crises, and because I had talked to you uh, a lot in the past year during those crises times, uh, I wanted to try to talk to you again, and because you just, for whatever reason, stopped responding to me, it was uh, upsetting me. It was upsetting me very much, and uh, if you think I was being aggressive at all, that's not the tone that those messages were having. Um, though I was writing from a place of being very hurt emotionally. Uh, I was hurt actually by a lot of different folks on here. Um, I'm not trying to segue away from what I'm telling you, it's just a lot of the folks on here I was hurt because uh, I thought I could talk to them about things, and it was one of those things where a lot of this all broadsided me. And it's one of those things, if you and I get a chance to talk about it, Skip, I would like to talk to you about it. Uh, it would mean mean a good deal to me. If you don't want to talk to me because of your, you have an opinion of me now that's different than the one you used to have, I understand. It's, uh, it's upsetting. It's not the way I want things to go down, but there's nothing I can do about it. So it's one of those things I have to accept. But I would hope that you can understand uh i've said it before i am damaged goods and 
these fools were poking the bear, and unfortunately, you happened to be witness to when the claws came out. And I know that you didn't care for it. And uh, I apologize. That's a side of myself I didn't want you or a few of the other folks to see. I tried to curtail it as much as I could. I try to be positive and peaceful while I'm, while I'm here streaming, and uh, a lot of folks made it where that wasn't going to happen. So, the minions, you're all very good people. You're all sweethearts. And uh, I'm sorry that my roughneck ways ruffled your feathers and brought heat on your house. I apologize to you guys. Harley Quinn's happy hour. Harley. Oh, you poor thing. They did to you what they, well, they tried doing to me. It kind of only went halfway. But the fact of the matter is, Harley, it's the reason that they did this to you is, uh, I think that's because they were jealous. I mean, you're pretty bond. Uh, you have a good relationship with, uh, Celestial Parsnip. And, uh, I think that that's why people disliked you so much. I understand you got accused of a few different things. I've been hearing all these different stories, and my thing is this, um, the same thing with, like, what I heard about with Zephanel is, I'd like to see real solid evidence, no one's, and I haven't looked for it is my point, but I have talked to a few people about it, and I've heard differing opinions and whatnot, and the same with what's gone, gone down with you, so I don't judge until I have actual evidence, and again, just like with what happened with Zeph and Liz, um, a lot of the people who told me horrible shit about you, who told me horrible shit about them, are also trying to destroy me right now, so, you know, I ride the fence, but you were always good to me, you were a good friend, and obviously, this happened to you a few days before they started going after me, so you haven't, as far as I know, caught any flack or got any trouble from anyone uh, in regards to me. But thank you for being there and giving me the advice you did. And uh, just listening when I was having hard times. And, uh, yeah, I really hope that you can get past all this crazy shit that happened to you. And you can start streaming again, because I miss you and I do miss streaming with you. So there's that. And, uh, yeah, just hope all is well. Okay, let me see here. I'm sorry, I'm actually checking people off on a list because I couldn't memorize all of you. And if, at the end of this, if I have missed anybody or if the time runs out, well, the time runs out. But if I've missed anybody, hit me up. I'll actually cut a whole video uh, for the people I've missed if it's like one or two. Or if it's one person, I'll cut a whole video just for you. So, I don't think I missed anybody. But you guys remember I have a bad memory because, not a bad memory, sometimes it's patchy because of the head trauma over the years. So, I might have missed one or two people. Uh, Malkavian, a lot of you folks probably don't know Malkavian, Malkavian is a friend of mine, uh, Malkavian helped me with a lot of stuff over the past couple of months, past year or so, one of the original people I had streamed with, uh, Malkavian is good folks, and I really appreciate everything, just everything you've done, thank you for being there, thank you for being in my corner, and thank you for all of your help. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. You see. Rich at Art. You know, Six talks about how I had an interesting life. This young man is still in high school and he's lived all over the planet. That's why he has that wild accent. Even though he lives in Cali, he picked up a few different things from all over the place. And he's just, he's a great kid. He does some fantastic art now. I can imagine how it's going to be when he gets to be like in his 20s. Uh, but yeah, the same thing. People were harassing Rich. And they were, you know, threatening Rich. And they were annoying Rich. Rich, I'm sorry, man. Thank you for being in my corner. Thank you for being a good friend. And I'm sorry that you went through all that nonsense. It's ridiculous, man. It really is. Seriously. But you're a good kid. And I really appreciate everything you did. Thank you. I'm sorry that, again, that they went after you, bunch of bastards. Let's see. Jean-Pierre Palmereff, a.k.a. the Duke. I'm just going to call you Duke. Duke, thank you. Uh, you were an honest guy. Uh, you were... 
you listened when I told you, you know, I was not doing any of this crazy shit that they were accusing me of, and you're one of, like, maybe three people who I didn't stream with who believed me. So, yeah, I really, uh, I really appreciate that, man. You know, you're a good person. Uh, hopefully I can, in the coming months, show that you didn't, uh, back the wrong horse. And, uh, yeah, just... Again, thank you for being decent, and if anyone gave you any flack, I hadn't heard about it, but I apologize, man. That sucks, you know. I don't know why people gotta give you guys shit for talking to me. Bullshit. But, still, thank you just the same, man. And, again, any trouble you got, I apologize. Uh, William Stanchever, really quick, just thank you for staying neutral. Battle this. I know you're a troll, and you probably you did say a few things. I've seen that Bada Bing thing you said, you bastard. I hate that, but uh, it, it's just so dumb, bada bing. I, I understand it's they're making fun of, like, it, it was something like the first generation uh, would make fun of, like, the how backwatered the Sicilian dialect sounded, but anyway, you stayed neutral, and uh, you heckled the shit out of all people involved, so uh, just, I appreciate your candor, you know, you spoke to me a few times um, as a gentleman. And that's the thing, uh, even though you were a neutral party, you still showed courtesy, and you, sh you still showed uh, the modicum of respect that a troll can. So, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you, William. Antoine. Now, believe it or not, Antoine did not get involved. He kept himself distant, but he gave me advice where he felt I needed it, and... Uh, he was, he was good people, Antoine. He threw me out of his server and left mine and said he wasn't getting involved in anything, but then could not resist at certain intervals to just hit me up to see how I was doing and to give me advice. Which shows that even though you're trying to be neutral, uh, the decency does creep out. So, thank you, Antoine. I appreciate that. Broken Word. Uh, Broken Word had hit me up when all this shit went down. Um, the same with Tanky. Both of you guys, Broken Word and Tanky, had both hit me up when all this crazy shit started going on. And also offered advice and counsel when I needed it. And uh, to Broken Word and to Tanky, I thank both of you for this. Uh, you guys gave me good advice. And uh, you listened to the shit when I was bitching like I didn't know what to do. And you didn't go and like, as far as I know, put it all over Twitter and get, you know, like, throw me under the bus for shits and giggles, you know, because you could see I had no idea what the fuck was happening or going on, because this is all new shit to me, you know, and, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you for dealing with my greenhorn ass, because I got no idea. <laughs> I've still got no idea what I'm doing, but I appreciate it. You guys are decent people for that. Thank you. And since I'm talking about these guys, uh, obviously I'm going to bring up Geek Thulu. Uh, Geek didn't know me from Adam. Uh, I'm pretty much sure I annoy the hell out of Geek now, because he hasn't been responding to me in a while. And Geek, if I've been annoying you, I'm sorry. But, uh, I appreciate whatever help you had given me at the time. I, obviously, I know what the help is when I say whatever. I mean, it's all of it. You know, I thank you for all of the help. And, uh... Yeah, if you did catch any slack about this, I know you probably enjoyed it because that's how your sense of humor worked, but I'm sorry if any of it got under your skin or annoyed you or if they went after you and bombarded you. But for for the help that you had given me, I appreciate it. Thank you, Geek. Seriously. And you still got to help me with that second edition thing. Seriously, I want to talk to you about that. Second edition D&D, &D, for those of you who don't know what I mean. All right, pen's running out of ink. Sinrise. Uh, Sinrise had streamed with me a few weeks ago, despite the fact that uh, most of the guys he's friends with don't like me. Uh, Sinrise was pretty much neutral on this sort of stuff, and uh, he and I streamed together, and uh, even though he got uh, earfuls from other people afterwards, he still came on and uh, didn't even let me know he was getting any flack. He, uh, he just stuck it out, and we had a good stream, and I didn't know about that till afterwards. So, Sinrise, thank you. I appreciate that, man. You got class. Inquisitor. Inquisitor who, before anything had happened, never responded on time. Like, I would hear from the guy weeks later, so can't tell if, if, if Quiz was mad at me or not. But when Stanley passed, uh, Quiz had come on the show, 
and we talked for a good good portion about everything that went down. And it actually got me to get my comic books out of the, the closet. So, yeah, a good times to talk in the quiz. And uh, quiz, if you got any uh, any flack from this, I'm sorry about that, man. I apologize. Thank you for being there. And uh, damn it, man, you still owe me that one shot when we were supposed to go on. I think it was you, me, and Polly. We're gonna uh, what were we gonna do? The Walt Simonson run on tour. We were gonna